Hello everybody, back already, or I'm back, or you're back, Some somebody's back. So um, I promised we'd talk about how to measure the Thiele small parameters of a warfer. First off, let's talk about why you'd want to measure the Thiele small parameters of a warfer. All right. I build a lot of speakers these days, and besides a very basic check to make sure that the speaker's remotely close, to the manufacturer specifications that I based all of my modeling on, I don't measure them. You know, I really don't. So um, uh, the one exception, well, we'll get to that at the end. So um, the reason you'd want to measure them is to make sure that your low frequency alignment, uh, whether it was sealed, vented, bandpass, is going to perform as you expect. Back in the old days, people used to make speakers, and if it was not enough bass, they'd cut a hole in it. If it was too much bass, they'd make a bigger hole. It was a lot of trial and, trial and error. It was a little bit better than what I just described, but it wasn't uh, as easy as it is now. Some guys named Thiele and Small, uh, at different times, published papers uh, on some parameters that you can plug into a series of equations they derived and get a really good model for how that speaker will perform. All right, So that's why you'd want to measure them. The problem that I see is that manufacturers measure speakers under a variety of different conditions, from drive level, how they mount them, whether they do something called added mass method, uh, whether they put the speaker uh, into a, a sealed enclosure to get the, the parameter shift they want, um, and all these methods introduce a little bit of variability, okay? They are small signal parameters, which means they're supposed to be measured at a small voltage. Typically half a volt, some manufacturers like SEOS publish how they measure these parameters. And, it, and, and for them, for SEOS, it is two volts, all right? So it will vary, the parameters will vary by drive level. So the parameters will also vary by how the driver was treated before you went to measure them. So let's look at the things that you really got to keep in mind. All right. All right. Ooh, it's hard to do this backwards. All right. So first is preconditioning. What happened to that driver before you measured it? Okay. You have to exercise the suspension on these woofers. Run them pretty hard for a while. Don't damage them. Don't bottom the drivers out. If you start to hear funny noises coming from it, lower the drive level down, all right? Run them near their resonant frequency so you can get a lot of motion without dissipating a lot of power and possibly damaging the voice coil uh, adhesives due to thermal overload. Next is mechanical mounting, okay? I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff. I've done all kinds of crazy stuff. I've had speakers hanging from the ceiling. I've done, I've done all kinds of things. The easiest way to get these things mounted for testing looks like this. All right, this is an example driver, a little closeout Aura Sound six inch um, uh, wide bandwidth woofer. And all I do is temporarily uh, tack a board with some clamps to a workbench. I use a strap clamp to hold the woofer to the board and I'll add my mass to the back of the woofer cone, okay? That way, if the blue tack discolors the cone or anything like that, it's not visible in the finished application. If this were a very thin coned full range driver, very fragile coned full range driver, I would actually use the uh, uh, sealed box method where I measure the driver in free here, then I measure it in a box of a known volume, uh, and I calculate the parameters from there. Almost everything else though, I use added mass with the mass on the back of the cone, okay? You'd be surprised and how fancy some of the manufacturers make that. I've seen things made out of 80-20 extrusions, custom fixtures. This works well enough for home, okay? Next is drive level, all right? You have to know how much voltage RMS you're putting into your woofer cone. As I said, a lot of manufacturers measure at half a volt. Some systems measure at even smaller voltages than that. What I do is I measure how much voltage I'm using with a simple multimeter, just a cheapy little guy, but I measure that voltage at 60 hertz. 
a handheld multimeter is only going to be accurate at 50 or 60 hertz. Okay? So I use REW, I put it into tone generator mode, I put a 60 hertz tone out, I measure half a volt RMS if I want to do at that level, then one volt, then two volts, and I'll actually measure the Thiele small parameters at a variety of voltages so that I can see how the parameters change with drive level. All right. Last, not least, is adding mass. Got to add enough mass to shift the uh, resonant frequency of the driver down enough. A lot of times you need to be 20% or more. Um, the catch with that is, is if that mass is not firmly attached to the woofer cone, it will start vibrating against the woofer cone. You won't get very good measurements. Okay? Blue tack and nickels work well for me. I have had problems with very large woofers where I'm adding 30, 40, 50 nickels to the thing, and that just gets expensive. Um, so uh, if you uh, want, you can use washers, you can use other things, but nickels work well for me. If adding mass is not convenient, build a test box. Okay. Again, with uh, I see a lot of people not wanting to build some test enclosures uh, or make some basic measurements, and they've spent thousands of drivers or thousands of dollars on drivers. I've seen people buy some really esoteric stuff and then ask, well, how do I measure the theory small parameters? Okay, maybe spend a little bit less on drivers, get some basic measurement tools, and you'll be far better off. Okay. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I rarely measure the Thiele small parameters of drivers anymore. I will do a basic frequency um, uh, uh, impedance check. Okay, I'll, I'll sweep the driver uh, over its 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and look at the resonance frequency. Okay, if my measurement looks an awful lot like the manufacturer's published specifications for the free air um, impedance of that driver, I'm done. Okay, if you measure and model the difference between performance of the driver that you got and the the published specifications even if they are different oftentimes the end result the differences in the end result are so small it just doesn't matter it's not a big difference okay so the one exception to that is horn drivers whether they're tapped horns front loaded horns things like that those systems are dependent um, uh, uh, modeling those systems is very dependent on the fairly small parameters that you might measure for those woofers. Okay, uh, a small change in those parameters may end up being a very large change in performance in the in the horn system. All right. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.